In today's video, I am doing some gentle exploration of a beautiful old woodland, looking for macro shots just like these. This great spider, it's just sort of hanging between the bluebells. I'm going to try and focus stack this because it's staying fairly still. I'm in the most incredible bit of wild old woodland. I actually booked a stay in this rural cabin specifically because it was right next to this woodland. It's all owned by the same farm. So it means that right outside the door of where I'm staying, it's just the most incredible macro playground. It's a great time of year because we've got all the bluebells are out, loads of green things are starting to unfurl. So that means we've got insects everywhere, we've got plants to photograph, we've got all kinds of things to point a macro lens at. Just a simple fly on a leaf. I want a really shallow depth of field. I want it to really stand out from its background. So I'm at f2.8, 125th of the second. And I'm probably just going to do one shot, focusing on the fly. And I might not do any more. Except that I definitely will. I'm just going to try and shuffle my camera a little bit closer. Hopefully, without disturbing it. Being very patient right now. That could just be because it's quite cold. I'm going to try focus stacking. Auto focusing at a close point on the leaf. This place is a great example of why I enjoy macro so much. Because even if I'm not here for the photos, it's so peaceful. It's so tranquil. This might be one of the most zen woodlands I have ever visited. I've heard no traffic, no planes, no people, no cars, no nothing, just birdsong flapping of things. I've seen deer, I've seen hare, herons. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, one thing I know I want is a nice clean shot of some bluebells because they just look absolutely beautiful. And I've been trying to find some that have that kind of classic bluebell look, which I know is a bit of a silly thing to say. They're all classic, I suppose, but I found this uh, particular one, which is just hanging really nicely. We've got lovely bells hanging off it. And it's sort of uh, standing by itself, so it's a very uncluttered image. So I'm going to go vertical. And you know what? I'm going to turn my camera on. I'm 
you know what? I've got some real mistiness on my camera and I can't work out if that's on the lens or if that's inside the camera on the sensor. I had this problem in a recent video and it kind of ruined my day of shooting and I'm really hoping I'm not going to have the same problem here. Nope, I know what it is. I know what's happened. We've got a soft focus effect from the spherical aberration control on this lens. It gives everything a bit of a hazy, a hazy look. So I'll take that shot and then I'm going to dial it back to the middle and take the same shot. And we can see that there is a huge difference. I don't really know what the point of it is because it just looks like your lens is a bit broken or foggy. I don't like it, so it's a weird one. But anyway, there we go. Canon seemed to think it's something that we wanted. This classic bluebell shot that I was going for isn't so much classic, it's more just boring. I'm just sort of moving the camera around and focusing on different bluebells. There's so many around that when you find different ones and focus on them, you get sort of different bokeh effects with different ones in the foreground versus the background. So it's basically worth just keeping your camera on a tripod and just moving it around and seeing which ones sort of stand out. But especially right now using a very wide open aperture, I'm low, so I'm trying to use more of the brighter sky as the background. It's giving a really light and airy effect that I think works super well for these kind of springtime flower images. It's a cute, tiny slug really little one just coming down these uh, these bluebells I know probably a lot of you going a slug that's not an interesting subject but I disagree I think a slug can make a lovely subject particularly when it's just on top of some lovely bluebells like this I think I'm going to do it's a little bit dark just bring in extra little bit of light. I like this, I think it's cute. This slug sort of curling around in this sort of S shape. It's little eye stalks are coming out and it's on a really nice looking bluebell. I think it's a, I think it's a lovely shot. LED panel I'm using is the Zion 5-Ray M40. It's a really powerful light panel. I've talked about it in videos before. If you are interested in it, I will leave a link in the description of this video. Just found an adorable tiny snail. Real cute little thing. If I try and look down, maybe if I bring out my light again, just add a little extra. You know what? I'm going to go F10, 80th of a second, and I'm going to bring up the brightness. found this tiny little snail just clinging to a bluebell. It looks really, really sweet and I thought it was gonna be a good shot. But I'm gonna give this one a bit of a different vibe. So I've turned this LED light panel up to pretty much full power and I'm going F9 and 200th of a second to capture it. Now if I just take a shot without the light, we have got, I would say, pretty much a black frame. So when I bring this light in, suddenly it lights that snail up really nicely and we can get some really dramatic light falling on it. But I'm manually focusing on the snail itself and hopefully at F9 that's going to give me enough front to back sharpness. Again being able to hand hold this light means I can put it exactly where I want because without it we've got darkness but as soon as we bring it in 
we start to light everything up but it also means that I can put that light exactly where I want maybe I want it a bit more over the top coming down or maybe it is more around the side and as I move it in it gets brighter and as I move it further away it gets darker so it's a great way of crafting that light crafting those shadows exactly as you want and for me something like this looks really good because of our settings we've got very little ambient light so it almost looks like this is a studio shot i really could spend day after day around these woods there's so much to see and because this is all like private farmland basically I've not seen a single other person in the entire time I've been in here. So not only does that mean that I've got undisturbed photography, but it means that the actual areas that I'm photographing are really wild and untouched. Everything's been allowed to grow. That means that insects are here. Every single square inch is full of life. And even as I'm walking down the little tracks, Every single bit that I walk past is teeming with life. There are flies, there are spiders, there are slugs and snails. There's all kinds of things all around me. So I'm really enjoying actually just trying to find these little things, but unfortunately I don't have a lot of time here. So I'm still trying to keep things pretty quick. Some of my shots have been a little bit more snaps than considered images, but I have also taken some misty landscape style shots but i'm probably going to put those in another video because they are a very different sort of photography to the macro that i'm also trying to do but it's why that i find that just sort of traveling fairly light with just one macro lens on my camera and a handheld led light panel is a really good way of working quite quickly but it does bring me to an end of today's video um, i really hope that you've enjoyed seeing the things that i have found today uh, if you have enjoyed this video then do please hit that like button and of course consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.